Welcome with me, Pastor Tanya Vera and Jay. So good to be spending time with you. I'm the senior pastor of the Full Gospel Church, Elofsdal. And today is our seventh day that we are into our 21 days fasting and prayer. And therefore today I want to talk to you about fast, faith, fire and fruit. So uh, Mark chapter 9 is our text for today. And we start to read from verse 14. It says, And when he came to the disciples, he saw a great multitude around them and scribes disputing with them. Immediately when they saw him, all the people were greatly amazed and running to him, greeted him. And he asked the scribes, what are you discussing with them? Then one of the crowd answered and said, teacher, I bought you my son who has a mute spirit. And wherever it seizes him, it throws him down. He foams at his mouth and gnashes his teeth and becomes rigid. So I spoke to your disciples that they should cast it out, but they could not. So we want to move from could not scenario to a I can scenario. So verse 19, he answered him and said, Oh, faithless generation. So what did Jesus do? Firstly, he immediately rebuked the faithlessness of the generation. And that even included his disciples. He says, how long shall I be with you? In other words, how long shall you hear my teachings and sit under my word and see me modeling this? He says, it's because of the lack of the faith that you have that you cannot do that which you are supposed to be able to do. He says, how long shall I be with you? Bring him to me. And now let's look at Jesus, verse 20. Then they brought him to Jesus, and when he saw Jesus, immediately the spirit convulsed him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming at the mouth. So see, there is always a reaction of evil when it comes in the presence of the Lord. So he asked his father, how long has this been happening to him? And he said, from childhood. And often he has thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But now listen carefully to this statement. But if you can, if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus just addressed the faithlessness. And, and now this father comes and he speaks faithlessness again. And he says, if you can, First of all, he doubted the ability of God because he says, if you can. Secondly, he doubted whether God wanted to do it for him because he says, then have compassion on us and help us. If, if. And he's questioning whether Jesus is able to do it and whether he wants to do it. And now Jesus doesn't play to his sympathy. Jesus doesn't, he comes and emphasizes, but he doesn't sympathize with him where he comes and says, oh, you know what, I know you're only human uh, person, I understand, I understand you have issues. No, immediately he rebuked them and he said, oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? In other words, how long shall I be patient with you? I'm teaching you and I'm helping you, I'm modeling this to you. And now he says the following verse 23, if you can believe. The father says, if you are able, and Jesus comes and he says, whoa, no, don't put that on me. Don't say if I, I can, I can do it. I am willing, I am able, I have the compassion, I want to help you. The issue is not if I can, it is if you can. So Jesus said to him in verse 23, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believe. And therefore for 2022, I want to say to you, if you can believe, not if Jesus can do it, if you can believe, he says he's willing, he has the ability, but do you believe? Verse 24, it starts with immediately. Look now at the repentance of the heart of the Father. He didn't come and covered up and says, Lord, no, I didn't mean it like that. He, he came and immediately repented and he said, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Now that is faith. That is repentance. That is humility. That is dependence upon God. In verse 25, when Jesus saw the people came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, Deaf and dumb spirit, I command you. Come out of him and enter him no more. Then the spirit cried out, convulsed him greatly and came out of him. And he became as one dead so that many said he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and he arose. So the boy was set free and healed through the power of Jesus Christ. Verse 28. And when he had come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, 
why could we not cast it out so they didn't want to ask him publicly again because he already rebuked them publicly so ask them privately and and we see that publicly he rebuked them when he said where is your faith oh faith is generation how long shall i bear with you how long shall i have patience with you and then jesus came and he took care of the situation and now look at the faith of this the disciples even though they erred and even though there was a lack of faith they still had enough faith to come and say lord we want to learn and we want to grow so they ask him why could we not cast him out and we see in their lives and so it must be in our lives there must be a desire to stretch forward there must be a desire to seek the kingdom of god to move out of this miserable sorry i'm alive condition and attitude and to start walking in faith and many of us are like that. We want God to take us out of difficult situation. We don't want the troubles. We don't want the trials. But no, they come and they said, Lord, how do we conquer? How do we do this? How do we get to that place? And then Jesus said to them, this kind can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. This kind of faith, this kind of faith that you need to be able to conquer. There are things in your life that you will not be able to conquer unless you spend time in fasting and prayer. Hence, the 21 days of fasting and prayer that we have. And every evening at 6 o'clock, we pray together over our Zoom meeting. Now, I want to bring you to the next part of the message. Where there is faith, there is action. But it means that it brings about a physical obedience. So there is a physical manifestation of the spiritual work that is taking place on the inside of us. And we see in Exodus 17 verse 9, as long as Moses held his hands up high, they were conquering the Amalekites. See the physical action brought about a spiritual release. The obedience that is activated through faith then brings fruit within my life. So this is our theme for today. Say it with me. Uh, fast, faith, fire and fruit. So we see what is fasting. Fasting is the physical act of obedience towards God that shows your faith. And that brings that faith brings about a spark. That spark brings a fire. And that fire results in fruit within our life. So when we obey, also, which is so important, we need to obey with the correct attitude. Not because somebody else is doing it, but we do it because we want to do it, because we know it is the will of God. In 1 Timothy 2 verse 8, he says, I desire therefore that the men pray. This is a physical action everywhere. Lifting up holy hands, a physical action again. And then he says, without wrath and doubting. In other words, that is your attitude, without wrath and doubting. Now, wrath means you don't get angry. You don't become indignant because of the instruction that God gives you uh, to fast and to pray. I see many times when the worship leaders say, come on, let's lift our hands. Let's worship our hands. Then there are people that are like, I don't want to do that i'm not going to lift my hand i feel i'm worshiping god within my heart which means you don't understand the power behind a physical act you don't understand the spiritual release that will take place the spark that it brings within the supernatural when you obey when you do the word of god and for some reason you think that you don't need to do what you need to do uh, but you are looking for the same result you're looking for the same breakthrough you are looking for the same miracle but there is wrath with in your heart you've got an attitude and he says no without wrath and then he says without doubting without questioning the word of god and in the contemporary church we have uh, reduced everything to the stylish level well i feel you know everything we do is this uh, what we sense and what we feel and we we talk but we do nothing and when we try to get people to feel the way that we feel and if we don't agree we are fighting for everyone to, to so that we can have the right to feel the way that we feel and this is an energy that is expended but yet you've done absolutely nothing there is no physical obedience but you want the spiritual result and that's not going to happen um, there, you're thinking you know I am humble I don't have to bow my knees thinking you know for some of other reason I don't have to clap my hands I don't have to lift up my hands I feel I'm worshiping I feel I love God I feel I have faith but you never step out and take a risk See, everything gets reduced to the internal, but there's no external manifestation. And if I come and imagine I had to do that with my husband, where I say on the inside, oh, I love you, I love you, but I never say it to him. I never do it. I never show any action that I love him. It will not be long before he starts to question my love for him. And sometimes, not all of the time, because God is gracious, but God demands a physical obedience.
obedience from you and I to release a spiritual reward within our lives. And fasting is one of those deeds and acts of physical obedience. So when Jesus spoke in Matthew 6 verse 16, he says, Moreover, when you fast, not if you fast, he took it for granted that you will be fasting. He says, when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites with a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear to men to be fasting. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. You know, people coming and saying, Oh, why do you look like that? Oh, no, I'm fasting. Oh, you are so holy. You are so spiritual. No, don't be like that. He says, but you, when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face so that you do not appear to men to be fasting, but to your father who is in the secret and your father who says in secret will reward you openly. But the bottom line of this is where Jesus comes and he says, when you fast, not if you fast. What does fasting do? Fasting increases the favor of God within our life. Say with me, fast, faith, fire, Fruit. So we look at Daniel in verse 3 where he came and he says, I ate no pleasant food, no meat or wine came into my mouth, nor did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. This is 21 days. In verse 10, and suddenly a hand touched me, which made me tremble on my knees and on the palms of my hands. And verse 11 says, And he said to me, O Daniel, man greatly beloved, understand the word that I speak to you, and stand upright, for I have now been sent to you. But I want to show you something. In verse 3, he says that I ate no pleasant food. That means I ate nothing that was desirable to me. And in verse 10, he comes and says, Daniel, O man greatly beloved. That beloved also means desirable. If you are willing to give up that which is desirable to you, what happens? God comes and he says, Now I call you my desire. And therefore, we've got to understand the difference between the love and the favor of God. The love of God, we cannot change that. God loves you irrespective of whatever. He cannot love you less or more. God loves you. But the favor of God is initially given to you as a gift. And you know, the increase of favor, the increase of this uh, gift that has been given us is dependent on how we manage it. In other words, what do you do with that which has been given unto you? Uh, an increased favor comes with obedience and it comes with sacrifice once again fasting brings about a spiritual release within ourselves where we come and we align ourselves against with the will and the purpose of God and the way that God thinks you now faith comes and it brings a spark it brings a fire and it comes and it produces fruit within our lives doing that which God wants us to do through the power of the Holy Spirit and that's why in Ephesians 6 verse 12 it says for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against the spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. So we are not fighting people. You've got to understand. We are fighting principalities. We're fighting powers. We're fighting rulers. We're fighting the darkness of this age. And we are fighting spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. And that's why you and I need to get to a place where we step into the supernatural power of God so that he can come and ignite his fire within us through his Holy Spirit to be effective and anointed in what he has called us to do so that we can bring about the fruit, that he can bring about the fruit within our lives. So when it comes to fasting, I don't fast because I'm spiritual. I fast because I'm not spiritual. I fast because I humble myself before the presence of God. I fast because I need to be effective in the calling and the mandate of God in my life. And I can't do that without the help of God. So therefore, we are fasting because we need God to be a better wife, a better husband, to make better financial decisions to walk in a right relationship with people and people from different scenarios and different situations and this is my prayer for 2022 within your life that you will increase in the favor and in the the uh, uh, the unmerited unearned undeserved favor of god within your life and that we will um, also increase in that favor in our families in our nations and and sometimes people ask you, you know, what are you fasting for? But I'm not fasting for anything. Yes, we do have special prayer requests. But my main purpose for fasting is because I need Jesus within my life. I want to sharpen my relationship with Jesus Christ. And remember that fasting is not dieting. If you fast and you don't pray, you are just dieting. Once again, what happens when we fast and pray, it develops our faith. It connects our desires with God. That the Holy Spirit can come and it can do a work within our life. We put the spark within our life 
out where we want to do the will of God and where we step out and do the will of God through the power of the Holy Spirit and reap the fruit thereof. We see that even Jesus began his ministry with fasting in Matthew chapter 4. And you know if Jesus needed it, I need it as well. We see he taught his disciples in Matthew 6 verse 16, when you fast, not if, but when. So Jesus expects of us to have a lifestyle of prayer and fasting. And you know, when you're fasting, yeah, it's good and nice to fast from television and media, but the primary fasting is fasting from food. There we, we become physically weak so that we can receive the spiritual strength and the spiritual nourishment that God has for us. So you can do just water for the 21 days. Some are working and your work capacity do not allow for that. You need more energy. So if you are fasting the Daniel's fast, you eat vegetables and fruit. Or some of you might decide you're going to fast one meal per day. But when you fast that time, remember that time you need to spend in prayer and devotion. And I understand there are medical reasons and, um, and medical and, and physical benefits when we are fasting, right? The toxins are coming out and you're feeling it by the headaches, maybe feeling weak. The first uh, three days are normally your most challenging days. But at the end of the day, we do not do it for the physical benefit. We do it for the spiritual benefit, for the spiritual release, the spiritual fire of God within our lives. And we can sense it in our prayer meetings, how God is releasing His spiritual strength within our lives. And I want to encourage you, do it over a period of 21 days. Don't do it just for one or two days, because this is a habit that is being formed in the beginning of the year to help you to develop and to seek the face of God so that you can get to a place where you grow into God, where you are at a place where you say, Lord, I'm seeking the kingdom of God first and your righteousness. And therefore, I trust again that this year you are going to be on fire, that you will see the fruit of, of the spiritual release within your life, within your marriages, in your finances, in your business, in your ministry, that we're going to see it within our nation, that you will see the hand of God upon your life. And as we finish, I want you just to say with me again, fast, faith, fire, Fruit. And I pray over you today the blessing and the favor of the Lord over your life as you are obedient to the Lord, as you do that physical act of obedience. I trust God for the spiritual release over your life in the name of Jesus. May you have the peace of God which surpasses all understanding to guard your heart and your mind in this time. And may the joy of the Lord be your strength as you apply this word on fasting in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen.